Yo, what's up? Welcome to the Pro Sports Extra YouTube channel. Today we're going to be recapping UFC 256 and what a card this was. I mean, top to bottom, just banger after banger. The last pay-per-view of the year really finished strong with the best flyweight fight in UFC history, so let's get into the card. You got Kevin Holland versus Jacare Souza, where Kevin Holland brutally knocked out Jacare off his back in a way that very few men have ever been knocked out before. Watching Jacare get knocked out like that was like watching my grandfather get knocked out. It was painful to see. Like, Jacare, you're 41, buddy. Like, I don't know how many more of these your brain can take. But Kevin Holland, on the other hand, that guy does not shut the fuck up. Like, how do you chirp Jacare? He's such, like, He's like a cute old Brazilian man. Like, why, why are you being mean to him? Just, like, be nice, knock him out in kindness. You don't have to talk shit. But I guess it worked, because Jacare chirped back and then immediately got knocked the fuck out. Like, like who do you think you are, Jacare McGregor? Like, who do you think you are, Jacare McGregor? Like, you do not have to do any talking in there, please. Just fight. Don't get knocked out. You're old. But I think the next move for Jacare has got to be retirement. Like I said, he's 41. He's very old. I don't think his brain can take too many more knockouts like that. Kevin Holland, on the other hand, that guy's an up-and-comer. I know he called for Hazmat Chemaev after the fight, but I don't know if that's the best decision. Both Hazmat and Holland are both up-and-comers, so I don't know why you have them fight now and kill one of their momentums. I think you have them fight other people, build them both up, and then when they're both at the top of their games, you have them fight for either a title or a number one contender spot. But if you have them fight now, one of their hype trains just gets completely derailed. That's why I think Kevin Holland should fight Derek Brunson. Brunson's just a classic gatekeeper of this division. He's coming off three straight, but like, let's be honest, we all know the guy's not fighting for a fucking title. So, just have him fight Holland, and we'll see what Holland's really made of. Next up, you got Charles Oliveira winning a decision over Tony Ferguson. Let's talk about Tony Ferguson. That guy is not a human being. Like, if you're a tinfoil hat person and trying to find, like, aliens or some shit, look no further than Tony Ferguson. The guy overcame a torn ACL in, like, ten minutes, and then basically got his arm broken in the first round, and then continued to finish the fight. Yeah, he's lost two in a row, but that does not stop the fact that the guy's a complete freak of nature, and I would tune in to watch him fight every single day of my life. Charles Oliveira, on the other hand, is on a heater. Do you know he's won eight in a row? If you ask me Oliveira's record in his last eight, I would have guessed like four and four. I had no idea he's coming off eight in a row. But I guess he's a legit contender. Like, he just beat Tony Ferguson. You gotta put Oliveira amongst the top of the guys of this division. Like, he made Tony Ferguson look easy, and nobody's ever done that to Ferguson. Even Justin Gaethje had a tough time with him. But Oliveira had no problem. He basically beat him twice. Basically submitted him in the first round, and then got the decision. So I think up next for him, you gotta go with a guy like like Justin Gaethje at the top of the division. They both beat Tony Ferguson, both tough dudes. That fight would be an absolute scrap. It would probably end with one of them just dying in the middle of the octagon. And then the winner of that can fight the winner of McGregor Poirier, and we get things sorted out in this division. Then you move on to the main event, Brandon Moreno versus Davis and Figueredo, and what a banger that was. That was definitely the best fight in the history of the flyweight division, hands down. I mean, those guys were slinging it out just shot for shot the entire fight, and they both possess legit power in terms of flyweight. And I think the fight was scored well. I had a 48-47 Figueredo, but he got the point taken from him in the third round, making it a 47-47 draw. And I personally have no problem with them taking the point there. I always side with them taking points as opposed to being lenient. And if you disagree with that, I reference you to the Holly Holm Jermaine Durandame fight, where Jermaine Durandame legitimately assaulted Holly Holm two times after the bell. And the ref is like, hey now, Jermaine, if you do that a few more times, I might consider taking a point, okay? You cannot do that. Like, the ref in that fight didn't do shit. So I like the fact that when Moreno just takes complete punt to the cock, the ref acted and took the point because you can't say that it didn't affect the round that being said it was a draw so you gotta run it back 47 47 draw these guys have to fight again everyone wants to see it let's make it happen but honestly i can't watch a flyweight title fight without thinking of demetrius johnson i mean we really can't sit here and pretend like either of these guys would have had a chance against dj in his prime honestly get him over here now like he'd probably take them both out at once at this very moment great fight love figueredo love moreno love the division still but i mean Demetrius Johnson, best of all time, would have made light work out of these motherfuckers.